Elon Musk claimed China's heavenly palace could outpace anything in orbit, and he may be right. While the International Space Station is aging toward retirement and carries an annual cost of $3 billion, China built a sovereign laboratory from scratch after a U.S. ban. But how did policy exclusion spark such rapid, world-altering innovation? The answer upends the space race you thought you knew. In April 2011, the U.S. Congress passed a measure now known as the Wolf Amendment, named for its sponsor, Representative Frank Wolf. The law barred NASA and the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy from using federal funds for any direct cooperation with China or Chinese-owned companies, unless Congress was specifically notified and certified that no technology transfer or security risk would occur. The official language in the Appropriations Bill prohibited developing, designing, planning, promulgating, implementing, or executing any bilateral policy, program, or contract of any kind with China. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers argued this was a necessary step to protect American technology and address concerns about espionage and human rights. News outlets ran headlines about new barriers in the space race, while defense analysts warned of the risks of sharing sensitive aerospace know-how. Congressional hearings emphasized the importance of maintaining U.S. leadership in space and limiting Chinese access to advanced systems. Policy experts like Joan Johnson Fries noted that by closing the door to partnership, the U.S. was sending a clear message. China would not be welcome aboard the International Space Station. The legislative text, dry and technical, spelled out a sweeping exclusion that left no room for negotiation. For China's scientists and engineers, the message was unmistakable. If they wanted a permanent presence in orbit, they would have to build it themselves. On April 28, 2021, a Long March 5B rocket thundered off the Wenchang coast, carrying the Chenyehe core module into orbit. This was not a test flight or a proof of concept. Tianyehe was the foundation of a new space station, built from the ground up by Chinese engineers at the China Academy of Space Technology for the China Manned Space Agency. Measuring 16.6 meters from end to end and 4.2 meters across at its widest, Tianhe arrived in orbit with a mass of over 22 metric tons. Its cylindrical hull housed three distinct sections, a node cabin bristling with docking ports, a life control cabin for the crew, and a resource cabin packed with propulsion and power systems. Within hours of launch, ground controllers confirmed that Tianhe's solar arrays had deployed, stretching nearly 60 meters from tip to tip to catch the sun's energy. The module's pressurized volume, 113 cubic meters, offered about 50 cubic meters of habitable space, enough for three astronauts to work and live for six months at a time. On board, Tianhe carried advanced life support, guidance, and navigation systems, as well as a powerful robotic arm designed to move heavy modules and assist with assembly. This was not a scaled-down experiment. From the very first orbit, Tianhe was designed to anchor a full-fledged orbital outpost with multiple docking ports ready for science labs, cargo ships, and crewed spacecraft. The launch marked a turning point. Within a single day, China had placed the core of its own space station in low Earth orbit, showing the world that it could deliver complex, heavy hardware on a tight schedule. The engineers behind Tianhe had worked under intense pressure, transforming a blueprint into a gleaming, functional spacecraft, one that would soon welcome additional modules and permanent crews. On July 24, 2022, the Wentian Laboratory module launched aboard a Long March 5B rocket and docked with the Tianhe core. Mengtian arrived on October 31, 2022. Each module, nearly 18 meters long and weighing over 20 tons, approached the station under the watchful eye of ground control, guided by a suite of radar and optical sensors. As Wentian neared Tianhe, the station's seven degree of freedom robotic arm came alive. Designed to handle payloads up to 25 tons, the arm extended from its base on Tianhe, locked onto the new module, and maneuvered it with surgical precision. Real-time telemetry and docking camera feeds captured every movement as the arm rotated, translated, and gently aligned each module with the side ports, ensuring a smooth, controlled approach. 
Meng Tian's docking followed a similar choreography, with the arm once again acting as both crane and stabilizer. The process was not just automated, but adaptable, a clear evolution from earlier generations of space assembly. By late 2022, the three-module T-shaped configuration stood complete, each segment joined with millimeter accuracy. The robotic arm, now a permanent fixture, remains ready to reposition modules, assist with external experiments, and support future expansions, embodying the blend of mechanical strength and delicate control that defines Tiangong construction. Inside Tiangong, the atmosphere feels more like a high-tech laboratory than a cramped spacecraft. The corridors are lined with smooth, white panels and integrated handrails illuminated by a cool, even light. Every surface is organized for efficiency, with experiment racks, storage compartments, and labeled workstations arranged so nothing clutters the pathways. The station's layout is designed for long-term living, with dedicated sleep pods, a compact galley, and exercise equipment all within easy reach. Central to daily life is the regenerative life support system. Instead of relying on constant resupply, Tiangong recycles air and water with a closed-loop approach. The urine recycling unit stands out as a key feature. It draws wastewater from the crew, purifies it through a series of filtration and chemical processes, and returns clean water to the system. This reduces the need for cargo shipments and allows missions to stretch for six months or more. Astronauts interact with these systems routinely, checking gauges, logging water recovery rates, and maintaining the equipment that keeps the environment stable. The result is a self-sustaining habitat engineered to support human life independently in orbit and to do so with a level of order and cleanliness rarely seen in older stations. In low Earth orbit, even the most advanced space station cannot escape the gentle but relentless pull of atmospheric drag. To stay aloft, Tiangong relies on a blend of old and new propulsion, chemical thrusters for quick maneuvers, and a set of four Hall Effect ion thrusters mounted on the Tianhe core. These electric engines, fueled by xenon, provide steady, efficient pushes that help conserve propellant and extend the station's life well beyond a decade. Routine reboosts, sometimes aided by docked Tianzhou cargo ships, keep Tiangong circling between 340 and 450 kilometers above Earth, close enough for easy access, but far enough to avoid rapid decay. While the current T-shaped layout is already a feat of engineering, China's ambitions reach further. At the 74th International Astronautical Congress, agency planners revealed a blueprint for the next phase, expansion of Tiangong into a cross-shaped, or double T configuration. This plan calls for two additional experiment modules to be added along the station's main axis, bringing the total to six. The modular design means each new segment will dock directly to the central hub, increasing lab space and scientific capacity. Official schematics show the future layout as a simple cross with all modules connected through Tianhe. No launch dates or module names have been announced, but the intent is clear. Tiangong is built not just to endure, but to grow. At the Juquan Satellite Launch Center, a new era for China's human spaceflight program is taking shape. Engineers in flame-retardant suits stand ready as the next-generation crew vehicle, designed for both low-Earth orbit and lunar missions, sits fully fueled on the pad. Known in official releases as the new crewed spacecraft, it represents a leap from the Shenzhou capsules that have ferried astronauts to Tiangong. Unlike its predecessors, this vehicle is built for reusability, with a modular design that can be configured for short-term orbital flights or the rigors of deep space return. On June 17, 2025, the team initiates a zero-altitude pad abort test. In less than two seconds, solid escape rockets ignite beneath the capsule, blasting it clear of the simulated launch tower in a pillar of smoke and dust. High-speed cameras capture every frame as the capsule arcs away and parachutes deploy, bringing it safely to the ground. The data from this test confirms the system's ability to protect astronauts in the event of a catastrophic launch failure. Side-by-side -side comparisons show the low Earth orbit variant, optimized for crew rotations to Tiangong, next to the beefier lunar version with its reinforced heat shield and expanded life support. As engineers review telemetry and inspect the scorched capsule, 
the focus is already shifting to the next milestone, an in-flight escape test planned for later in the year. Each successful trial brings China closer to routine, safe and reusable access to orbit, setting a new standard for crewed missions in the decade ahead. The International Space Station stands as the largest human outpost ever assembled in orbit, a sprawling complex launched in 1998 and continuously inhabited since the turn of the millennium. With a pressurized volume nearly three times that of Tiangong, the station has hosted more than 250 astronauts from around the world, yet its legacy comes at a steep price. NASA alone spends roughly $3 billion a year to keep the station running, covering everything from life support repairs to regular shipments of food and scientific gear. The station is now approaching its twilight. Retirement is planned for 2030. Inside, the Crew-11 team prepares for another science rotation. Commander Zena Cardman and pilot Mike Finke from NASA, Kimia Yui from JAXA, and Oleg Platonov from Roscosmos lead the mission. Their work continues a tradition of multinational partnership, even as the station's panels and modules show the wear of decades in orbit. The station is often compared to a classic car, cherished, proven, but increasingly expensive to maintain. As agencies look ahead, new players are preparing to take the stage. Axiom Space and Blue Origin have unveiled designs for commercial stations meant to pick up where the International Space Station leaves off. Axiom's renderings highlight a massive glass observatory, a next-generation cupola, promising panoramic views of Earth for astronauts and future tourists alike. Blue Origin's orbital reef aims to host laboratories, habitats, and even business ventures. In this emerging marketplace, Tiangong and its successors will face competition not just from governments, but from private visionaries determined to shape the next era in low Earth orbit. Right now, the world orbits a crossroads. As legacy stations face retirement, new rivals rise with purpose-built labs and fresh ambition. The next chapter of space exploration is being written in real time by those who build, not just dream. Where we go next is anything but settled.